So at the Trump International Hotel and Tower for the Toronto Venture Forum with Capital Innovation. And we have the pleasure to be here with uh, Michelle Scarborough from the National Angel Capital Organization. Right? Very good. Very good. <laughs> I learned my right. things, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, Michelle has a very nice track record. And uh, just to start off with, uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about yourself and uh, you know uh, what got you to uh, become an entrepreneur and... Uh, start investing you know sure okay yeah. um well i've i've been in business almost my whole life i think yeah. and uh i started uh, with my first company in calgary and then built several businesses in vancouver um which i then subsequently sold and i started okay. angel investing about 20 years ago and uh, uh through a network that i had of individuals and investors that i had done business with in vancouver mm -hmm. we started investing in early stage companies and I really like so the whole commercial space. So you built your little space. angel group? Little angel area, group yeah. and um, these ge the gentlemen that I was investing with were very seasoned entrepreneurs and investors and so they kind of taught me the ropes when I was in oh, my great. early 20s. So, um, so that was in your, your early 20s you started early investing? Early 20s, yeah early 20s. Oh, great. I was kind of... So how old were you when you started your first company new then? new out of the gate. I was still in university. Oh yeah, great. Yeah, I was still in What university. What field was it in? You'll laugh. It was a massage therapy uh, education institute yeah. in Calgary. Yeah. So we taught people how to be massage therapists oh, and uh, turned it into a $3 million dollar business. So wow. Yeah. So, and it's still running. It's doing very well. Is it? Oh, great. I'm not involved at all, but <laughs> <laughs> so I had nothing to do with it continuing. But, but it's uh, good to see your baby that's still uh, yeah, running, no, you know? Yeah, no, it's very cool. It's oh, very great. cool. And after that, so uh, which field were you focused on? Uh, I was in a variety of fields. Variety. So I built and was part of teams that built companies in everything from manufacturing to medical devices to solar panels. Okay. So I kind of did across the board a variety of different industries and sectors, but always with a global market um, field of view. So that's okay. where I spent my time, yeah. So your uh, your primary focus for building those companies was to, to bring the, the right technical people in and then... Uh, do growing the business and doing all the uh, commercialization. Yeah, so it was a combination. Most of the companies that I was involved with were early stage, mm -hmm. um, and the you know because the range was so broad. Every time you built a company and you brought new people to right. the table, they were always a bit different. Yeah. But the premise of building that business was always the same. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, we engaged with people that had deep expertise in technology through to deep expertise in financing and right. mergers and acquisitions and so on. And so what so was, was your secret sauce to uh, so many successes? The people. The people? <laughs> All about the people. the people. Yeah, always about the people. Great. Yeah, and getting the right mix of those people when you're building the, the companies and... And I did that as an investor as well. So we'd always. So you're an active investor. You take an active role in the, the companies you invest in. Yeah, and yeah, and that's what I'm doing now. So I I run a a small seed and early stage fund called Smart Seed Ventures, and that's okay. the premise for our fund is that we, again, work at the early stage, syndicating right. with other angel mm -hmm. investors with a purpose to commercialize and take those technologies to the global marketplace. Right. You have yeah. your uh, that so expertise. So uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. So it's fun. And uh, what was what's the most rewarding thing you you've done during like that uh, amazing careers of yours? Oh, the most rewarding thing. Well, I have to say it's actually seeing an entrepreneur with a great idea um, take that idea and turn it into a viable business opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think that's it's the energy around seeing that person right. be successful. That's really that's where kind of the kick is. That's really what's fun. Mm -hmm. And then their success begets our success. So we kind of, okay. we participate in that through, you know, financial success and other and otherwise. So it's kind of a neat combination of right. things that allows that to happen. So it's cool. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Have you ever been involved with uh, cross borders investment with the United States? Mm -hmm. and yeah, we've done several. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the companies that I was involved in early on, we sold to the U.S. Okay. to a company down in uh, California. Mm -hmm. and uh, And I've been involved in helping to bring licensing technologies over from Germany that then become com viable businesses here okay. or become part of a bigger business. Right. So lots oh, of different <laughs> ways. It's, you know, the world is a small place. I right? saw in so uh, your bio as well that you, uh, you've you been involved with public companies, uh, capital mm -hmm. pool companies. So uh, a lot of people use those mostly like uh, in mining and, you know, yeah. like in the venture. But uh, for a technology company, at, at what stage can a company be viable to go and, you know, and, and use this vehicle to grow the business? Well, it's hard to say. Technology companies are hard when it comes to the to public venture capital, mm -hmm. to the CPC program specifically. Yeah. So there, there's you know a laundry list of criteria that we would look at to see whether or not that company should, in fact, be. Because in the a lot of markets. those companies, they go public too, too quickly early. and they don't have the revenues to support it and the growth. So yeah. then, 
And the challenge, um, the challenge that some of those companies have too, is that they're they're in a market. You know, they're in a niche market that doesn't have the aftermarket experience to be able to back them up. Right. So, you know, you can only make the market so many ways. But that's why it's very, so very good for mining. So, do you have any good successes, like good um, um, success stories from like a, a company you brought and did the, you know, your qualifying transaction on a capital pool company, and then all it of the companies, well? all of the companies that we've done very well with, yeah. and that have succeeded as a result of going public mm -hmm. using that ve that, that mechanism. Um, have been in the mining and oil and gas sector. Okay. And it's because the right. aftermarket, <laughs> exactly. right? So I, I you know, for, for me and, and, uh, and the companies that we work with in the technology side, um, then you wouldn't we'd have to, yeah, we'd no. have to think about it very clearly. And at the early stage, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't right. recommend it to exactly. most of them. No. It's just not the right avenue. They need to build a business. Mm -hmm. And what do you think we're trying uh, to build, um, you know, like a, a community, like a golden triangle between Ontario, Quebec and New England to create, you know, like new opportunities, new co-investments. And I know the geographical barrier can be hard sometimes. So what do you think about this? And do you have any, uh, you know, like um, suggestions or how we can, like, you know, to make it work? Well, so I think it's a great idea. And I think that geographies are going to become less and less distinct over time. Mm -hmm. The, again, you know, we live in a in an internet-based world, right. and um, once you've built those initial relationships, mm -hmm. doing investments with others that don't live in your geography, I think is going to be a lot easier. And certainly, our premise with Smart is that that's that is how we're going to operate. So okay. we will syndicate with angel investors, that and the right angel investors and the right groups of angel investors right. for the best intention of building that business. Okay. So if those investors are in Boston, great. Mm -hmm. If they're in Toronto, also very good. So it's Even the right mix of investors. Even if you're not uh, close to uh, the entrepreneur you invest in, like you can you take an active role with the growth of the company, even if you're because of all the communication tools we have, right? Cana communication tools, um, both company side and mm -hmm. also on the investor side. And it's, you know, again, it's that relationship building exercise. Right. So I think you'll see more and more syndication and co-investment happen over time. So I think this is, you know, this is this is a really good catalyst, I think, at this forum and the way that you're trying to mm -hmm. do it with those three right. areas mm -hmm. to kind of start to build that collaborative mechanism and just, you know, keep cultivating oh, okay. it. It'll grow. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, to wrap things up, because I don't want to take too much of your precious time, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, final words of wisdom uh, from Michelle. Oh, final words of wisdom. Oh, you're catching me at a wrong time. <laughs> um, no, I, I, you know, again, words of wisdom. I, I'm also the chair of the National Angel mm -hmm. Capital Organization. And um, and our organization is dedicated to bringing angel groups in Canada together. And mm -hmm. I think s if we think about it in those terms, in addition to what you're doing with respect to Capital mm -hmm. Innovation, um, we're all on the same page. So exactly. We we'll just try to work hand in hand. Yeah, and like let's let's raise the, the bar. The end goal is uh, the same, right? Yeah, so, uh, I think so. Let's raise mm -hmm. the bar on Perfect. on angel capital. Let's raise the bar. Raise the bar. Raise the bar. Great. Well, thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you.